Hi everyone, welcome to your practice. Today's class is all about the shoulders. We'll be increasing mobility as well as strength in that entire thoracic region of the spine and all of the muscles that support the attachment of the shoulder to the back body, so that rotator cuff group. You will need a strap or something similar <laughs> to a strap that you might have at home, like a rope or a tie for your robe. So just take a moment, go grab that, pause the video, and I'll meet you back on your mat. Let's start with shoulder flossing. So from your standing position, place your feet hips distance apart. Bring your strap up to shoulder height and take one meter's distance between your hands. Make sure the wrists are neutral, not cocked out to the side, and find that neutral alignment now through the elbow joint and the shoulder joint as well. Plug the head of the arm bones back. Gently draw the lowest ribs in as you lift the arms into the overhead plane. Once you get there, give a nice pull to that strap. Notice how that fires the back body. Keep that as you exhale and return the strap all the way down to touch the thighs. With your next inhale, keep the tension on the strap as you lift into the overhead plane. And as you exhale, slowly release. Now a few things might happen when you get those arms overhead. The tendencies here are to jet the head forward and to send the ribs out. So once you get overhead, just check in. Hug the lowest ribs in. Press the back of the head to be in line with the back of the shoulders. I'd like to do about five more of these big inhales as you lift up. Slow exhales as you release. Starting to connect to your breath, perhaps for the first time today. Twice more. Last one. Bring the strap to shoulder height once again. Take a little more space between your hands. Inhale, lift into the overhead plane. And exhale, move behind you, either pausing when you get into that sticky place or continuing for a full rotation. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, release forward. Find these full rotations or pausing right when you get to that really tight place. Just work with what feels good for your practice today and your range of motion in your own shoulders. The really important part here is to maintain that neutral alignment, pushing down through your feet, tailbone scoops down, lower ribs hug in, and the back of the head presses to be in line with the back of the shoulders. I'm always amazed at how good this feels. Let's take two more full rotations. Rebalancing the rotator cuff group. Good. Next time the strap comes forward, go ahead and release. And we won't need that again, so you can just place it aside. You might want to roll those shoulders or give a little shake or a shimmy. Get yourself to the top of your yoga mat. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Flip your palms forward. Enjoy that external rotation of the upper arm bone. And then feel the shoulders settle into place. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the gaze. Exhale, hinge at the hips, slowly folding forward with that deep bend in your knees. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Hands to shins, straight arms, straight legs. Exhale, soften the knees, float the right foot to the back of the mat. 
Drop the back knee. Feel free to pad it as necessary. Untuck the toes. Inhale. Sweep the arms into the overhead position. And exhale. Come into cactus arms. Retract the shoulders. Activate the fingers as you slowly sink your hips into the posture. Low lunge on Janayasa. Keep your shoulders where they are, flip your palms toward one another, and then straighten out the arms to the best of your ability. Keep as much space between those hands as you need to maintain your shoulder alignment. Exhale, release your hands. Now tuck your back toes, straighten the leg, and walk to the right, parallel your feet. Fingertips are under the shoulders, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, hinge at the hips, fold. Coming back into that similar cactus arm position, take your fingertips wide. Retract the shoulders. You can either keep fingertips on the floor here or take hands to the outer shins or outer edges of the feet. Give a push to your big toe mounds to send your sitting bones up a little higher. And as you connect to the big toe mounds, feel the inner thighs lifting up, back, and apart. That spiraling of the legs. Good. Fingertips underneath the shoulders. Second side. Point the right toes to the back of the mat. Move on to your left knee. You can pat it as necessary. Send your hips forward as you lift your arms for low lunge. Drop your arms into cactus position, retract your shoulders, find your pose, and then add the arms by flipping palms toward one another, extend into the overhead plane. Exhale, release your hands, tuck your back toes, look forward, step forward. Inhale, lengthen halfway, fingertips to shins, straight arms, straight legs. Get a little extra triangulation by really pushing those fingers into the shins. Exhale, soften the knees to fold. As inhale, rise all the way up, arms lift. Exhale, hands to heart. Take your hands behind you now. Interlace the fingers. Draw the heels of the hands together. See how my hands are resting right on my sacrum? Try to hug your elbows together now. And then start to straighten them out. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bend the knees, beginning to draw the belly toward the thighs. Lift the knuckles skyward. Push the big toe mounds down. Feel the inner thighs spiraling toward each other, and then up toward the ceiling. Now, without moving the feet, try to scrub them apart. Notice this activates the outer hips. Keeping the belly on the thighs, lift up the hips a little higher. One more breath. Exhale, release the hands. Nice work. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, float the right foot to the back of the mat. This time, high lunge. So keep the back knee lifted. Sweep your arms into the overhead plane. Sink into your hips. And then release the hands behind you. Same arm position. Here we go. Hands are on the sacrum. Heels of the hands together. Elbows firm toward the midline. And then start to straighten out the arms. If you'd like to add a back bend today, draw the knuckles down that back thigh ever so slightly. Good. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, release the hands. Walk to the right, parallel the feet. Inhale, fingertips are under the shoulders. Exhale, come into your forward fold. 
Sweep the arms up behind you, interlace the fingers, and get that nice shoulder stretch. Notice how it helps shift the center of gravity slightly, deepening your pose. Release the hands, inhale, lift. Point the right toes to the mat, uh, to the front of your mat now. <laughs> Come on to your back toes, here we go, lunge. Inhale, lift the arms. Find your balance, sink into your pose and release the arms behind you. Last one like this, draw the knuckles down that back thigh ever so slightly to deepen into your back bend. Inhale, reach your arms overhead, and exhale, release your hands. Step it back, down dog, everyone. Good work. Bend both knees. Give a strong push to your hands and feel shoulders aligning themselves on the back body. Lower down into tabletop, finding melted heart pose. Keep your hips stacked directly over your knees. Send your hands one foot forward. Release the ears in line with your biceps. Release the top of the head either to a block, a blanket, or the mat. Lead with the back of the head as you return back to tabletop. Take your knees together, send your hips to one side, and kick your legs all the way forward. Come onto your backs for a little bridge pose. Interlace the hands behind the back. And then just rest your hips down on your hands. Your feet are hips distance apart here. Keep the big toe mounts pressing to engage the adductor group of the inner leg. Inhale, lift the hips, rooting through the shoulders and then lifting the chin to root to the back of the head. This is a wonderful beginner little bridge pose. You're actually not utilizing too much strength of the upper body here because the arms are creating a foundation. I'd like to challenge you all now by releasing your arms, asking them to really participate a bit more. Tap your 10 fingernails down onto the floor, open those palms wide, and root the back of the hands to the floor. Now give a lift to the sternum, see if you can lift it up and back. Let's do some flowing bridges now, keeping that alignment every time you get to the top of your pose. But as you exhale, lower down, tap the sacrum to the mat. Slow inhales to lift. Exhale to lower. Find your breath. You can even soften or close the eyes here. Magnificent back body strengthener. Every muscle of the back is supporting this movement. Find that slight toning through the back of your throat, inhaling and exhaling through the nose to the best of your ability. Letting that ujjayi breath become a bit stronger. Let's take three more. One, perhaps 
linger at the top for that heartbeat, and then slowly release down. Good. Walk your feet a little wider than your hips, and let your knees touch. Just relax for a breath. And then bring your arms to cactus arms, heel toe your feet together. For supine twist, press the feet, lift the hips, turn them to the right. Lower the hips, let both knees move right. The goal here is for the knees to vertically stack and for the hips to vertically stack. If they're quite off, that just means that there's some tension in the glutes that we need to work with. So you can follow one of the hip opening sequences to help you with that. Try to Find that alignment and then feel the left shoulder really working its way down to the mat. I'd rather see the left shoulder lifted slightly and the hips stacked though, because that shows me that your lumbar spine is neutral and that you're really caring for it. If you'd like to, you can take your gaze to the left and then notice with every breath here, a little unwinding occurs. If things are feeling tense, a little self-massage can help. Place the right hand to the left pack. And just make little circles around that tense muscle group. I even like to take my fingers under the armpit and the heel of the hand on top and just give a little squeeze. Once your self-massage is done, you can release your hand. Just enjoy three sweet breaths and the full expression of your twist today. Really releasing each exhale to the base of the abdomen. Letting go of stale CO2 that you've been harboring. Allowing this twist to truly be cleansing. Now with heavy feet, lift one knee up at a time. Rebalance the pelvis, take a clearing breath. Second side, press the feet, lift the hips, turn them to the left, lower the hips and let the knees move left. Find that vertical stacking of knees and hips, peel the right shoulder down and take the gaze right. Left hand to right pec if you're looking for that little self-massage. Mm, feels so good. Once your self-massage feels complete, see if you can enjoy three slow exhales. With heavy feet, lift one knee up at a time. Rebalance the pelvis, take a clearing breath. Draw knees in. Give yourself a squeeze. And then extend legs all the way up. For a brief Shavasana. The most important pose of your practice, that is why we always sequence it last. Inhale, feel a bit of tension in the body. Notice where you're holding. And with your exhale, release any last bits that you may have been storing. Can you let it go? Soften the muscles behind the eyes. Release the bridge of the nose, the cheeks, the jaw, the throat. Release the shoulders down through the wrists, hands, and fingers. 
and release the hips down to the heels, feet, and toes. Slowly begin to wiggle the fingers and toes. And then take a deep breath in. Through the mouth, let it go. Bend your knees, pressing heavy to the sacrum. And then move to your right side. Extend your top leg, support yourself all the way up to a seat. Keeping your eyes closed or just a very soft gaze. Draw your hands together in front of your chest. Unifying our hearts as one. And bow down to your own heart in gratitude that you took the time to move, breathe, and create space in the shoulders today. Namaste.